Now, what is current? The current can be defined as any motion of charge or electron from one region to another in an electric circuit. The circuit, on the other hand, is the path through which current flows. So, an electric current can be defined as the time rate of flow of electric charge around the circuit. Current is equal to quantity of charge all over time. The charge is measured in columns, while time is measured in seconds. So mathematically, I is equal to Q all over T, and Q is equal to IT when you cross multiply. The use of current is ampere. From our lecture on units and measurement, we talked about units and prefaces. Where we said very large or very small units can be expressed using numbers or value or letters or values rather. Same thing applies to current here. Because current may have very large values or very small values. So we have the milliamperes. Milliamperes is 10 to the power of minus 3 and the symbol is small letter m have microamperes. Microamperes is 10 to the power of minus 6 ampere and the symbol is mu A. Nanoamperes. Nanoampere is 10 to the power of minus 9 and the symbol is N, small letter N A. Also, picoampere is 10 to the power of minus 12 and the symbol is PA. So basically, these symbols are used to represent the values of currents depending on their values. Now let's take a look at the instruments used in measuring current. Earlier we said the instrument is called the ammeter. But we have different types of ammeter. We have the microammeter and the galvanometer. Now the microammeter is used to measure smaller current than the ammeter. Why the galvanometer is also used to measure very small current. Take a look at the picture shown. The difference is the symbol written on them. You have the A, the micro A, and the G for galvanometer. So basically, these are the instruments used in measuring various currents in the laboratory. Let's take a look at another point: potential difference. In circuits, potential difference can be defined as the difference between any two points in the circuit. And we say it is the work done. The one column of charge moves around a circuit from one point to another. The unit of potential difference is volt, that is V. Similarly, the instrument used for measuring potential difference is called the voltmeter. Now, this is a picture of the voltmeter. We can see that it's similar to the ammeter, just that the symbol V is shown on it. Also, it is used in practical purposes. Let's take a look at the next one, the EMF. Like we said, EMF simply means electromotive force. Now, in a circuit, a cell can give an electric force or pressure across the terminals. Okay? So this force or pressure is what is referred to as the electromotive force. And it is defined as the potential difference between two terminals of the cell when it is not delivering current to an external circuit. Also, each unit is in both. Now, when you say a current is not, when you say a cell is not delivering current to an external circuit, it means that we're talking about the concept of an open circuit. An open circuit is when the current is not flowing, that is, when the key is removed from the circuit. So the instrument used for measuring this is also referred to as a voltmeter. You can take a look at the symbol for voltmeter, V. So this symbol is very important when it comes to circuit analysis. Let's take a look at the next one, which is resistance. Just as the name implies, Resistance is the opposition to the flow of current in a circuit. 
It is an electrical quantity that measures how a device or material reduces electric current flowing through them. It is measured in ohms. Also, in circuit analysis, the symbol for resistance is R, which stands for resistance or resistor, as the case may be. And let's take a look at the fundamentals behind this lesson, which is the Ohm's law. The Ohm's law states that the current flowing through a metallic conductor at constant temperature and pressure is directly proportional to the potential difference across its ends. Mathematically, V is equal to IR. Where V is the voltage, I is current, and R is resistance. So basically, if you take a look at the circuit shown, you have your resistor, you have your current, and you have your voltage. The last point there is the cell. Now let's take a look at limitation to Ohm's law. Just like any other law, Ohm's law have the following limitations. One, that it only holds for metallic conductors and city materials. Two, that there's need for constant temperature. The last one is that there's need for constant pressure. So what this means is that a deviation or change from the following physical quantities will affect other variables preferred or related by the law. However, we have some conductors that do not obey Ohm's law because they are not affected by Ohm's law, such as the radio valves, transistors, semiconductors, rectifiers, neon gases, and acids. So these various conductors do not obey Ohm's law. Also, in circuits, resistance or resistors can be arranged in various ways. Basically, you have two ways input resistors can be arranged in circuits. You have the parallel arrangement and the series arrangement. Now, in series resistor arrangements, in series connection, the resistors are arranged end to end. And in that case, the effective resistance is given as R is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. And let's take a look at the diagram to show series arrangement. So for series arrangement, for series arrangement, let's say we have a diagram that looks like this. Like I said, this is the symbol for resistors in circuit analysis. So this is our R1, R2, and then R3. You can see that the resistors are connected end to end. The end of R1 joins to the beginning of R2, the end of R2 joins to the beginning of R3, and so on and so forth. And we say that the effective resistance R is equal to R1, R1 plus R2 plus R3. So basically, this is how to solve or analyze series arrangement of resistors. Now, in series arrangement, the following points should be noted or noted. This includes the following: that the same current passes through each resistor. When you have circuit connected in series, the same current passes through each resistor. Also, the combined resistance is greater than the individual resistance. That is, the effective resistance is greater or higher than each individual resistance. And lastly, that the potential difference V across the whole series, across the whole series connection, is equal to the sum of individual potential differences across each resistor. That is V is equal to V1 plus V2 plus V3. Now let's take a look at the second arrangement, which is the parallel arrangement. Now when, when resistors are connected in parallel, it means they are arranged side by side. 
The first one will say they are arranged ends to ends, but in parallel, they are arranged side by side. And in this case, the effective resistance is given as 1 over R equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 all over R3. Now, if you take a look at the diagram shown, you can see that R1 is on top of R2 and R2 is on top of R3. Okay, so basically, this is resistors arranged in parallel. Now, the effect of this series ampere arrangement is that in series arrangement, you discover that it's the same current that flows through it. So, it is not advised to carry out a wiring of house building using series connection because if there's a fault in one room or in one part of the building, it's going to affect the whole building. Whereas, in parallel connection, each of the resistors have their own current. That is why in some building, you discover that there will be light in some parts and there will not be light in some parts. Such buildings are said to be connected using a parallel connection. So it is advised to use parallel connection when wiring a house. So in parallel connection, the following point should be noted. The points include that the same voltage passes through each resistor. So the resistors have a single voltage passing through them. Also, the combined resistance is always less than the least individual resistance. That is, the effective resistance offered is very small. And that the current across the whole parallel connection is equal to the sum of the individual current across each resistors. Now, we've talked about the concept of resistors. Let's take a look at the concept of cells. Like I said, cell means battery. So just like resistors, cell can also be arranged in series and also in parallel. Take a look at the diagram. The first one is series connection. We have E. Connected ends to ends to E, connected ends to ends to E. And in the second case, we have E on top of E on top of E. So basically, this is cells in series and also in parallel. Now we've succeeded in discussing the various terms in current electricity. Now let's take a look at examples. 